Hello, my name is Paul Boag and you're watching 12 Practical Ways to Become More User-Centric. You see, the world has changed. Digital has changed it. People are more demanding than ever before and the web has given them more choice. So they've come to expect it. They've got a voice online, a voice with which they can complain, and so they expect instant lines of communication with friends, family, and most importantly, with your organization. They don't want to wait. They expect an outstanding level of customer service in all aspects of their life, and they want you to listen to them and to respond to them in a timely manner. In such a world, how do you meet these new expectations? How do we better listen to, the pe uh, to people and respond to their needs? How do we build a user-centric culture? Well, here are 12 practical steps that you can take to build a culture that listens, a culture that is user-led. The first step is listening and responding to user needs. Um, and that means you have to better understand people. The chances are your organization has a lot of information about your users already, research that you've done, but also the experiences of employees across the organization, especially the customer facing ones. The problem is that this information is in little pockets and isolated. Now it's time to hunt down that information and bring it together into a single place, a central picture of your users, if you like. But you won't have all the information you need for a complete picture, especially if you've got a lot of user groups. And that means it's time to start speaking to users yourself. When you've got a lot of user groups, this is going to be hard, but any interviews are better than none. Talk to as many people as you can because every conversation will bring new insights. Make it an ongoing part of your daily work that you're regularly in contact with users. And now, interviews are great, but you will need a more representative sample. And this is where big data can help. Find out what data you hold on users and spend time diving into it. But a word of warning, go in with a question or multiple questions that you want to answer. Otherwise, you'll find yourself overwhelmed by the mass of data. If what you want to find out can't be answered, gather new data run surveys online, add better analytics tools to your website, but basically don't stop until you have a clear picture of your users' needs. It's easy to become overwhelmed with all of this information, and it's not something that your colleagues will spend time looking at. So take the time to simplify what you've learned into something like a customer journey map or an empathy map. These simple infographics give you and your colleagues a snapshot of user needs. This is something you can turn into attractive artwork and you can then hang on the wall. And this helps everyone focus on users every time they look up from their desk. When you start work on a new service or a project, make sure you begin with those maps that you have them to hand. Don't let a project begin with a feature list or a set of internal goals. Instead, you always want to start with a user's need. What user need will this project meet? Don't make assumptions either. Speak to users and find out if that need is a real one and if the project actually has potential to address it. Even consider um, including the user in the planning stage. This will make sure that the project remains relevant throughout the whole of its life cycle. Unfortunately, we can rarely do all the projects that people come up with. And projects that help users can often get sidelined in favor of some senior management's pet project. Stop prioritizing based around who shouts the loudest. Instead, work with colleagues to agree a policy for user um, needs to be prioritized that you build a policy of prioritization based around user needs, not an internal gender. Content creation often suffers from a similar problem in this regards. It starts from the wrong premise. It starts by saying, what do we want to say, rather than asking, what does the user want to know? And that has to change. When creating any content, we need to ask ourselves two simple questions. What does the user want to know about this subject and what should they do next? Another issue with content creation is that we can become caught up in complexity. We need to ensure clarity if we want to clearly communicate with our users. 
And nowhere is this more true than with edge cases. User groups um, or, or specialist needs that, that are unusual or specialist in some way can cause real problems. We don't have the luxury of ignoring these, but we must be careful in our attempts to address them. Careful that we don't become obsessed with these complexities and in our desire to provide an experience on the edge cases, we start to undermine the experience of the majority. It's not just how we interact with users that needs to change. We also need to build digital services in a different way too. We can't run these proje projects in the same way as we've run other projects. Not if we want to include the user's voice in the process. Not if we want the services to meet the needs of those users. Instead of big project specifications, we need to start prototyping. Prototypes that we can get feedback on from real users. Prototypes that we can then improve and iterate into a more robust service that we can roll out to everybody. This means that we need to work in a different way. We can't continue to work in silos because users don't think in terms of silos. They don't care what our organizational structures are. We can't carve up digital services between departments and neither can we hand off users from one team to another. We need to start working collaboratively and forming interdisciplinary teams. When it comes to digital, it's easy to fixate on the website, but a website is generally a broadcast platform and it doesn't really allow us to listen or interact with our users particularly. Even a mobile app can't really help with that. If we want to become more user-centric, we need to put social channels at the heart of our approach. And that means investing in manpower and resources. Resources to make these channels customer service channels, not just a place for announcements. A customer service channel that is, is global and open 24 seven. Finally, if we want to become user-centric organizations, we need to redefine our own role. We can improve the user experience on our own. And even if we've got a team behind us, that's not going to be enough. We need to change the entire organization. And that means we need to become user experience advocates. We need to commit ourselves to educating our colleagues and managers. We need to be raising the profile of the user across our organization. We must become disruptors and mavericks if we're going to bring about lasting change.